deepest honor and a deepest privilege to be in the house of God and to be sharing the word of God with you today. First of all, I want to give all honor, all glory to Jesus Christ, the King and Master of my life, the Savior of my soul. Jesus, I thank you today. It is a privilege and we know, oh God, I know Jesus that you will move in our midst mightily. You will speak to us. You have touched my tongue, Jesus. And my tongue has become that of a skilled writer. It has become a pen in your hands, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I partner with you like right now, God. And we will give glory to your holy name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to use this opportunity to also um, duly recognize and honor and acknowledge the saint man and woman of God over my life, pastors Imisi and Olumide Owolabi. <laughs> Glory! I want to honor them because without them, I will not be standing here today. No, quite literally, I will not be standing here. It's, they are the pastors of the church. <laughs> but also figuratively, I will not be standing here today. I would not be the man I am today if it were not for the nurturing, the love, and the caring prayers of our pastors and also the trust that they have put in me. And so I want to honor them today. Please put your hands together for them. Thank you, pastors. I don't take this for granted. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Who's ready for the word of God? I also want to also specially appreciate my wife. <laughs> I love you, baby. Thank you so much. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Our hearts open. I want us to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus. My heart is open. Heavenly Father. I receive the spirit of revelation and wisdom today. My eyes are open. My heart is open. And your light will come. I have understanding in the word of God. And your spirit is pushing me to destiny. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Over the last week, a couple of days, I had been asking the Holy Spirit what I was going to speak about. Um, our pastors dropped the bomb that I was going to um, be bringing the message a couple of days ago, about four days ago. I was just like, hey, Baba, what will I say? So I asked pastors, please, any topic they say as the Spirit lead, I say, wow, it's me and you, Lord. <laughs> and I began to pray, and I think the second day, he had told me what to preach about. So today, we're going to be talking about the value system of God. The value system of God. Woo. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Everything we do in Christianity, everything we do, everything we do in Christianity, the result of our Christian practice, everything we do is based on heaven's value system. Everything. Somebody say everything. Everything is based on heaven's value system. Take for instance, the way you live your life in Nigeria is based on a value system. In natural sense, everything is based on a value system. The clothes you wear is based on a value system. The house you live in is based on a value system. You transact and interact with a value system. You work in and for a value system. So everything in the spiritual realm is also based on a value system. Somebody say value system. value system. Do you want to move as Hope Nation? Do we want to, as a church move to the next phase of what God has for us? Yes. You know, over the last month, it was a tough message, but this love, the love message for one month, it dragged my wig, dragged us deeper. It made me see parts of myself that I was just like, oh my God, I didn't know I hadn't surrendered. Oh my God, like, oh my God, I'm ready. It was hard at some point. But we were ready. And I remember the beginning of the year. I came here. I think that was the first Sunday after we had received the word of the Lord for the year. And I said, this is the year for deeper. Can we remember? Yeah. 
And of course, from Hosea, the, you know, the word of God for the promise of the week, Hosea chapter 14, 15 says, and it gives us roots to go deeper. You want to smell like fragrance of Lebanon? Your roots will go deeper. So from love, we are going deeper. And people don't also know that the cedar of Lebanon is one of those rare trees that can last forever. And so the value system of God it is in such a way that we must remember and always be in the mind and the space where we want things. We want to live a life that what? Lasts. We want to live a legacy that lasts. We want to have a family that lasts. We want to have a marriage that lasts. Except we truly understand the value system of God, we will be wondering why on earth are we doing this thing and it's not just walking in. Some areas you will find that there are limits and you have done everything you can. Some people always wonder, I've prayed, I've fasted, nothing is happening. It's like as if there is a cap. And they're wondering why they're not getting results like they should. It is because of the value system of God. So we must also take note of this, that the way we determine in the natural sense of things what is right and what is wrong or what the, 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 way, the way we determine what is right and wrong based on immediate results or success is wrong. Praise the Lord. I start a business and boom! Somebody starts a business, boom! We just see results. Oh yeah, bah, 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 bah. 17 million naira. 17 million dollars, it does not mean that that is success in heaven's kingdom. So, our rating of success based on immediate success or results, we should remove it. As born again Christians, do you want to, be, do you want to act and live like you are children of God? So, we must know that the value system of God is something that takes time and something that lasts. We must be able to know that our attitude and desire should always be to build something of value that can last. Why? The reason why I will buy a piece of shoe for 200,000, 250. There are some shoes that are 1 million. When they tell you why, you will say because it can last. I remember when I was young, my father would carry, if we buy shoe, he will press it like this. I'm like, you are spoiling this shoe. He's like, no. When the time he tests it, he will say it's solid. This one will last. Because it was able to go through tension. I mean, now, now, the truth is that luxury items, they don't go through that test anymore. It's now based on soft life. You know, we are living a life of, uh, you know, it's just uh, based on, you know, I'm, I'm wearing this so status. People buy quality for it. People don't buy quality anymore. They buy status. But usually in the olden days, the reason why you buy designers was because of quality. When you put shirts in the washing machine, you are sure that it will come out and it will still stand. So that must be our mindset. To build lives, marriages, families, businesses that can last. God is a God of lasting legacy. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Israel, nations, Gentiles, the world. God is a God of legacy. The people that dealt with God, dealt with God based on a value system, legacy. I and my household will. The primary value or culture of God's kingdom is that of this value system. If I were to put the value system of God in one word, I would say it is honor. The primary value of culture, of the culture in God's kingdom, is that of honor. Let us look at Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 33. We're going to be reading um, the word of God quite quickly. I have a couple of texts, so we're going to be reading. Praise the Lord. Um, Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom and before honor is humility. Let's read it again. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom and before honor is humility. Let us read TPT. TPT says, the source of revelation knowledge is found as you fall down in surrender before the Lord. 
Don't expect to see Shekinah glory until the Lord sees your sincere humility. Until what? I love it. I love it when, you know, the crowd is responsive because it's me and you that are doing this together today. Let us look at Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 12. NKJV again. It says, before destruction, the heart of man, of a man is haughty. And before honor is humility. Before honor is what? What did we read before? It also said that before honor is humility precedes. Praise the Lord. Now let's look at Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 4. By humility, Proverbs 22 and verse 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Let's read it again slowly. Let's read it. I want to hear your voice. One, two, go. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. Riches, honor, and life. But it is by what? Humility and the fear of the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want us to look at Matthew chapter 5 and verse 5. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Jesus said it. It's not just Old Testament. These were the words of Jesus, not Paul, not Peter. Jesus said, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. CEB version says, happy are people who are humble, because they will inherit the earth, not the heavens. There's a different promise that, for, for that one. There's a different character for that one. But if you want to be great on the earth, if you want to have lasting legacies, humility that leads to honor must be present in your life. I'm speaking to us as a church because I want us to move. Listen, listen one of the things why I love this church is because what God does in this house, I don't know if he's doing it anywhere else. I'm just like, oh my God, like we're special. And he's like, he's curating us for something. So there must be a culture that we must begin to imbibe now because he's ready for us. Yeah. So are you ready for God? Yeah. Happy are people who are humble because they will inherit the earth. NLT of the same thing says, God blesses those who are humble <laughs> for they will inherit the whole earth. What did he say? The whole earth. <laughs> so now you see that all these things that we have mentioned humility, honor, fear of the Lord wisdom, pride destruction, wealth health, life they are all connected did you see all these scriptures we read all those things, it's a cause and effect system, cause and effect and one thing leads to another one grows into another Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That means you cannot have wisdom if you don't start from fear of the Lord. You can't honor except you are humble. So, stage one of honor is humility first. What is value? I saw some definitions of value in the dictionary and so I'm going to be reading them. Number one, the regard that something is held to deserve the importance, worth, or usefulness of something. The regard that something is held to deserve the importance, worth, or usefulness of something. Number two, principles or standards of, of behavior. One's judgment of what is important in life. Principles or standards of behavior. Hmm? One's judgment of what is important in life. That's your judgment of what the importance of this thing hold is the honor you place on it. Now, we know that when we, we're at home, there are some plates that you only bring out when there are special guests that come. Your parents are here, so they want to see the way you are doing your home. So there is a way you will pour chicken inside, then you display it on the table. The honor, the value system you have placed on those everyday plates that you use and you love, 
is different from the one you use to value the special ones. So it means that the way you value the human beings is shown by the way you bring out plates. Which plates do you bring out? For those people. It is the rank, rate and ranking of value system. Amen? Amen? Three, the worth of something compared to the price paid or asked for it. The worth of something compared to the price paid or asked for it. That is the, the plot versus the money. That of times that you will look at the cloth, they will say, it's 7,000. You'll be like, these shirts. 7,000. For what? I will pay for. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because in your mind, that is the value that you have put on that clock. There are some. They are saying that is the last piece. I will pay now. I will send Gokada to pick it up. So, the worth of something compared to the price that is asked for it. Hey! The worth of our life was the blood of Jesus. Hey! That is, Jesus honored us. That is, hey, Holy Ghost. Hey, hey, Holy Ghost, please, let me, let me just do this, someone. Because I prepared, I wrote. That is, Estimate the monetary worth of something. To estimate the monetary worth of So, that means that value can also be measured by money. If you say you honor somebody and you are not ready to spend for them, it's a lie. Now. Now. You can spend money on something without, or someone without honoring them. But you cannot honor without spending. For God so loved the world that he gave. After he gave, Jesus still came and said it is mine to take it, put it down or take it up again. It was his choice to still now another level of honor. He honored God and still honored man. Praise the Lord. I'm going somewhere. Number four, consider someone or something to be important or beneficial to have a high opinion of. Something, someone, a place, or a position. If there was a word to capture value system, I've told you, it is honor. If that's value system, honor. So, in essence, my prep sermon today is the honor of God. <laughs> what is value? Now, what is honor? I looked at some definitions still same dictionary, to see that they are the same thing. The same dictionary defined honor, high respect, regard, or great esteem. Number two, regard with great respect. So, honor is respect. Hmm? Now, the Greek meaning of honor, there are three, three words. Timeo. It says to prize or fix evaluations upon. I already told you people, that is money. The value of something compared to the money that is asked for it. By implication, it means also to revere. To revere. There are some things you will buy because of the cost. When you put it, you will tell children that are playing around, don't go near them. Why? You revere that thing. There are some people, you can't talk to, what? Talk to my wife anyhow. If I was, why? You revere that person. Time. The other second word, time, spelled T-I-M-E, same as time, says value or money paid or valuables to esteem highest degree or dignity or dignify itself. Now, to confer dignity on something or someone precious or prize. Now, to esteem a precious prize on something. Timios, the, the third one, says costly, mm, honored, esteemed, or beloved, dear honorable or most precious or having a reputation. Praise the Lord. So that means that to give weight or grant someone or something a special position or a position of respect and even authority in one's life is to revere or give honor to that thing. Have we established that? So I mean a special term regarding how people in society evaluate one another is honor. And this is usually in the world system based on wealth 
how much you have, the status, where you come from, the name you carry. Ah, that's a, I don't want to mention any name. Oh, that's an nanny. Wow. You regard that person. You see what was happening in the politics where they were like, where is your father's name? That name went only 14 generations in Lagos. You are not a Lagos person. So those things are with the world rates value or honors one. Your, where you come from, your ancestry. And it is wrong. It should be based on character. Honor should be based on character. And the authority, number two, the authority that is conferred on that person or on that position by God. Synonyms of honor, respect, reverence. Respectful reverence. What did I say? Respectful reverence. Esteem, dignity, deference, deference. To defer something on someone. Now, in understanding the honor system of God, we must first understand a couple of basic things. Number one, honor comes from God. All honor comes from God. What did I say? For unto the Lamb hmm, be your wisdom, power, strength, riches, honor. All honor comes from the Father in heaven. All honor. Now, authority is a product of honor. Now, authority is a product of honor. And out of God's honor, because God is seated in heaven, he made man and put man on earth. Hmm? Now, out of his honor, he now said, how do I establish my honor on earth? For people to show honor to me, because you can, God is spirit. God is spirit. So I, God needs to establish physical things. Like he has established the church here on earth. To establish his reign and dominion. And to build his people. Do you understand what I'm saying? You and I are a representation of Christ is alive. Christ is spirit. He's seated in the heavenly places beside Christ. Beside God the father. So, for somebody to say Jesus is alive is because you and I are alive. Yeah. You and I have the Holy Spirit in us. It's not that the, we, who, who here has seen Jesus? But you accepted him. And now you can say that I am hid in Christ and Christ in God. So, it's the same thing with honor. God said, I have honor. How do I establish honor on the earth? He then created authority as a product of honor. Now, out of his honor, he placed authority on some people. And then we are to give them honor. In deference to God. And that is how he establishes honor on the earth. Are you guys hearing me? We are meant to also, number three, we are meant to also acknowledge. That is, discern the value God places on that person or position. Now, to grow in honor, you must grow in discernment. Because it is a thing of discernment. You must discern the value that God has placed on this person in my life or over my life. Or a position. Now, we are to acknowledge that authority relates to God. And we are to relate with these people with honor, regardless of that person. Somebody say regardless. Regardless of that person. Regardless of that place. Regardless of that thing. Because it is dependent on God who owns all honor. It's not dependent on them. It's not dependent on the position. It is dependent on God. Because he's the owner of honor. That's honor belongs to God. All honor belongs to God. All honor belongs to God. That's what I'm telling you. All honor. All honor belongs to God. Hey. All honor belongs to God. All honor. You have been singing this since you were a child. Now I'm saying it. All honor belongs to God. So if he then gives honor to a certain person, position, place, or thing, you must, except you are not born again, except you don't want to live in the value system of God. Number five thing I want us to notice is that honor 
is an internal attitude of respect. An internal attitude of respect. Courtesy. Respect. It's usually accompanied appropriate attention or obedience. It is accompanied by. So like I told you before, there's no way you can love without giving. There's no way you can honor without giving full attention to or obeying. It is an inward attitude of valuing someone and then has an outward expression. So, honor must always start from inside. Inward attitude of placing a higher value on a person manifesting in words and actions that shows you, you prefer that person over yourself. Amen? Amen? Now, honor goes three ways. Somebody say, honor goes three ways. It goes up, it goes sideways, it goes downward. So all honor goes up, sideways. What is an example of giving honor upwards? That's people above us. The people who God has placed over us. Can I have examples? Can you throw it at me? Our pastors, Pastor P.I. and P.O. We honor you in the house, P.I. and P.O. Good, again. Sorry, parents, your bosses at work. Buari. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did I say? Buari. Your presidents. Your husband. Uh -huh. The girls, they don't, their mouths, you hook. What did I say? Your husband. Now, people sideways. Your friends. Your colleagues. Your what? Your neighbors. Your friends at church. Your colleagues at work. Your enemies. Your fellow human beings. Now, downward. Your children, your subordinate. Thank you. I love that word. Your subordinates. People who work with you or work for you. Your staff. Amen. Amen. Your nanny. Your arch girl. You are meant to what? Honor them. Honor goes up, side, down. Praise the Lord. Your wife. You will honor her. The pressure. <laughs> Preach the law. Preach the law. Now, like I said, <laughs> we cannot go deeply into upside down because <laughs> because of time. So, today, we are going to be talking about first, the concept of honor, which I've been speaking with you, and also honor towards God. We are going to touch on that. So, upside down. Uh, next week, Bible, we too. <laughs> Let me just, <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. Because I said, all honor, you cannot honor upside down, except you honor God. It is from that honor that you are able to disseminate from your heart to these others. So first Samuel chapter Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30 please. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. Praise the Lord. If you don't know where first Samuel is is after Ruth. If you don't know where Ruth is is after Judges. So we won't judge you. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. It, it says, mm. Therefore, the Lord, the God of Israel, says, I promise that your branch of the tribe of Levi 
would always be my priest. But I will honor those who honor me and I will despise those who think lightly of me. Who what? Hmm. Verse 31 says, the time is coming when I will put an end to your family so it will no longer serve as my priest. What did I tell you? I said, if you want a family that lasts, if you want a legacy that lasts, you must have honor. Except you don't want to last. You don't want to build anything that lasts and outlasts you. The time is coming when I will put an end to your family so it will no longer serve as my priests. All the members of your family will die before their time. None will reach old age. Can we see how weighty God puts honor on the pedestal of? That's the pedestal God uses for honor is heavy. What did I say? Everything we do in Christendom is based on honor. It's based on a value system. So that means that God will only put value on you when you put value on him. He says, I will honor them that honor me. It's not me that said it. It's here. We just read it. Amen? Amen. So you honor God first. Honor is the protocol of the palace. It is a protocol of heaven. And then in extension, it is then a protocol of the palace. Joseph was a man who showed great honor in all the things he did. The Bible says that when Joseph was going to the palace, he shaved his head. Some people have lost great things, great opportunities, great gifts because they did not understand the protocol of honor. Now the gift of a man makes way for him. It is the gift that they looked for. They heard of Joseph's gift, they called him. But it is honor that keeps you on the seat of the table. It is honor that reserves a seat for you. Your gift might let you get there. They will ask you, pay you, finish, and you go. What keeps you in the palace is honor. The Bible says of David that he behaved himself wisely. There is a way to behave. There is a way to talk. There is a way to act when you get into the place of honor. Saul, the Bible says Saul was afraid of David because he knew how to behave himself in the palace. He behaved himself wisely. Esther knew the same principle. Honor. It was not Esther's beauty that kept her. Queen Vashti. You think she was not fine? But what made her be displaced? It was one thing. Dishonor. Now, there is a way to speak. There is a way to do yourself. I want to take us on a picture and on a journey. Because everything we experience today in Christianity is based on the types and shadows of the Old Testament. So Judaism is a type and a shadow of what we experience today. It's a picture of what God was painting to show us now. And so, the, 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 in the Old Testament, in Judaism, people were not great based on skill or strength. What did I say? That's, forget what they did in Amalekite, in Canaan. In Israel, the ones that God has separated unto himself, the ones that God had called his own, the people, the nation he was building to last, they did not become great based on skill. If somebody gets what we are getting, what I'm talking today, your life will change forever. My life is about to take a turn. And I want us as a church to go in this might. When God showed me this thing about honor, I started crying. God have mercy on me. If honor is not in your life, you will strive. There are some times you will see some people at the top. Ah, And it's not as if they are even the best at it. This one can even do better. But they are there. It's not skill. For the race is not to the swift. Nor the battle to the strong. Nor bread to the wise. But time and chance happen to them all. What is chance? God's choice. That's I chose this one. If you don't need the understanding, forget about it. You will be there. Ah, I, she's not even the best at these um, clothes that she's sewing. 
Now nah, you. So Judaism was not based on skill or strength. That's the prerequisite to be great. It was based on one thing. Inheritance. Somebody say inheritance. Inheritance. Woo. Solomon in the way he came into the earth. It was a war scandal. But at the end of the day, it did not matter the beauty of Absalom or the skill of Adonijah. He was the chosen one. He was not even the first. Now, in the Old Testament, in the Old Jews, what had happened was, what they had said was, so if I have 10 children, I will now divide all my belongings into 11. I will give each children one, 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 one. Then the firstborn, I will give a double portion. And whatever position I had, he then assumes. Hmm? There are some. For example, our father Abraham. Hmm? He didn't even divide. He just gave Ishmael gifts. What did I say? So some children, were all they did have was gift. Meanwhile, inheritance was passed down to someone. Now, the law, I will read that scripture, Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 16. It says he's the first child, but it was not always like that. Was Isaac the first child? Ishmael was the first child, was the first seed. But it is not always based on I'm the first. Amen? Amen? And when we look at scripture even in the New Testament, the fathers of faith in Hebrews, we will see that none of these men in our own if we judge them based on character and standards, none of them made it. None. What did I say? None. From Noah to Abraham, oh, none made it on strength, skill, or best behaved. But if we look at it, it was one thing that set them apart. Let's do Deuteronomy chapter 21 and verse 16. When the man divides his inheritance, he may not give the larger inheritance to his younger son, the son of the wife he loves, as if he were the firstborn son. He must recognize the rights of his oldest son, the son of the wife he does not love. By giving him a double portion, he is the first son of his father's virility, and the rights of the firstborn belong to him. But it was not always like that. So, what naturally should be the right of inheritance was given to some people. That means that there were some people that were chosen on another criteria. And those are the people we remember in the Bible till today. It was another criteria. If you think you will get to the top by your skill or your talent, you will waste your time. If you get there by mistake, you will not last. Amen? Amen. Now let's look at some case studies I want us to. Genesis chapter 25 and verse 29 to 34. One day, Jacob was cooking some stew. Like, I want to go into case studies to prove biblically what I just said now. Because some people, things are shattering. Religion is about to be like, sir, what do you say? So I want to show us, how did these things happen? 29 says, one day, when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau arrived home from the wilderness, exhausted and hungry. Esau said to Jacob, I'm starved. Give me some of that red stew. This is how Esau got his other name, Edom, which means red. All right, Jacob replied. But trade me your rights as the firstborn son. This man is wicked. Your brother asked you for stew. Is it not something you say, ah, you never chop. Oh yeah, bro, take. Sometimes, if they happen, we go say, mm, oh, oh yeah, if I give you this to you, give me that shoe that I like. That belt. Normal now. This one went for firstborn right. That means that it was not that day he started thinking of it. He don't declare me. All right, but trade me your rights as firstborn son. Look, I'm dying of starvation, said Esau. What good is my birthright to me now? But Jacob said, First, you must swear that your birthright is mine. So Esau swore an oath, thereby 
selling all his rights as the firstborn to his brother Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread <laughs> and lentil stew. He said, okay, it's stew you want. After he, asked, so he said that we had bread on top. You only ask for stew. Mm, well, drink it with bread. So you will be full. Esau ate the meal, then got up and left. He showed contempt for the rights as the firstborn. Somebody on the line, contempt. We are going somewhere. Jacob bow standard did not deserve to be the chosen. Are we getting this thing? And those days, there wasn't much to judge by. Now, when it got to the time where the blessing, the inheritance will be conferred, <laughs> this man by scheming got it. <laughs> there wasn't much to be judged by. So, the Bible says that Esau was daddy's boy. Why? He was a man's man. Harry, when he goes out, he goes out to hunt. He comes back, he's smelling and he's telling his daddy, daddy, ha, there was one lion there, oh, then something, something happened. Ah, if you see the way I shot the arrow, the antelope, what? My pie. What did I just pick? I don't know. Chinese, Chinese Abby. What? Moti, um, not me. Etiku. The father said, yes, that's my son. Meanwhile, Isaac, Jacob, sorry, is at the backyard cooking with mommy. He was a mommy's boy. He was a house boy. He was one that swept the house. Do you understand? So when it comes to who should take, forget even firstborn, because two of them are twins. Even though, Esau came out first. But when they came out and stood, it was clear who the man was, who had six packs, And you see, the truth is that some people, they don't have, the, from the womb, the Bible says, Jacob was deceitful. He was wrestling his brother. When they came out in the hood in brother leg, there are some of you, from the womb, you've been fighting your mother. They knew that when you came out, you'll be stubborn. You, they kick. From the womb, he was deceitful. He was a usurper. But, Somebody say, but. See, listen, if everything is wrong about someone, and that person has one thing, one thing, God will close his eye and tell you you are wrong. What did I say? God will close his eye and tell you you are wrong. God banked his entire plan. You people don't know how God had started to bring Abraham from his father. His father failed. He then chose Abraham. Then said, I want to build the people. Walk with me. Time. Isaac. Jacob. Jacob became Israel. Do we remember the scripture? He's the one that became the nation. God banked his entire plan on a schema. On a schematist. God said, ah, schema, we can work with that. We will change him later. But if we can find honor, we will walk with him. I hear God telling himself, that's Holy Spirit and Jesus, we will walk with him. We will walk with him. When I was young, I said, God, I remember that scripture. Somebody open Malachi chapter 1 verse 3 to 4. Another person open Romans chapter 9 and verse 13. I will call two people to come and Romans chapter 9, baby. Romans chapter 9. Toke. Malachi chapter 1 verse 3 to 4. Open, open. Okay. <laughs> Romans chapter 9 and verse 13. Romans chapter 9 and verse 13. Thank you. Give her this, the mic. Mwa. As it is written, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. Hold. When I was young, I said, what did Esau do? God, you are love. I never understood. Why? From the womb, they've not been born. There was no sin committed. There was no law, no Ten Commandments. Moses was the one that brought Ten Commandments. Wasn't he not? Yeah. What did Esau do? That you hated him from the womb. You have read the scripture that I said, I will cut your family off. And you will hear it. Please continue, my dear love. Verse 14. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Is there unrighteousness? Is God un wicked? Certainly not. So, 
because when I was young, I could not understand. I said, God, we go leave this one. Laser. So, what did these children do? Now, please, Malachi chapter 1 and verse 3 to 4. Thank you, baby. Um, but I rejected his brother Esau and devastated his hill country. I turned Esau's inheritance into a desert for jackals. Wow. A what? <laughs> Amen. Woo. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16 to 17. You will see the answer now. Somebody, you will see the answer. Please, Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16 to 17. It says, Make sure that no one is immoral or godless like Esau, who traded his birthright as the firstborn son for a single meal. You know that afterward, when he wanted his father's blessing, he was rejected. It was too late for repentance, even though he begged for, with bitter tears. NKJV is where the real answer is. It says, because I said God again, what did Esau do? But let me tell you why God is God. If now, people say God is all-knowing. God is all-knowing because he knows all outcomes. But God has to trust you to make the right choice. If not, then why did he give you choice? But God doesn't know if you would say yes or no. God doesn't know if you would choose life. Jesus said, I beg you. Before you have laid down life and then I beg you, choose life. If not, he will compel you to choose life. But only why God is God is because when he knows your outcome, when you choose death, he knows yeah. When you say, if he says, uh, wear sh black shoe today and you wear white, he knows the outcome. So, God knows all outcomes. So, that means that, but from the womb, God had known the outcomes. Now, look at this scripture. It says, lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau. Profane. Somebody understand on the line profane. Profane. Somebody say profane. profane. To be profane means to be sacrilegious. What does sacrilegious mean? To lightly value or esteem spiritual or sacred things. From the womb he was a man of dishonor. One thing he's whole life and it shows when we look at Genesis chapter 26 and verse 34 to 35 later in life it shows the Bible says in Genesis 26 verse 34 to 35 he went and married two women from Canaan from where? Canaan, Canaan that God had already said yeah. in soon in years to come my people will conquer these people let me tell you why that was very important at the cost of this honor and he knew the cost of this honor in this situation is because from time immemorial before Noah, the enemy's plan was to, to destroy or to tamper with the DNA of human beings. So when the fallen angels slept with men, the children they born began to have DNAs and some of them began to spring up as giants. Some of them began to have demonic wisdom. They began to know how to create divination. So God began to already say, mm, I will have to create a people whose bloodline is pure. Then this man, because of his profanity, went and married. You know what this man was about to do? The firstborn son of Abraham's child was about to destroy the entire plan of God. God's desire was to create a pure line that he would create. For Is somebody listening? That was his, his character. Genesis chapter 28 verse 1 to 2 says that when Jacob came, in fact, it previously tells us it hurt his father. It brought pain and grievance to Rebekah and Isaac that Esau did that. Now when we see just 28 verse 1 to 2 and 6 to 9, we see that how Jacob came and his parents told him, we beg of you, marry from Laban family, we have relatives here. These are the only people you should marry. He went and married. Esau saw what happened. Esau said, ah, this guy is still getting favor from my parents. You know what he did? He now said, ah, let's go and look for blood. Then. He now went to marry Ishmael's granddaughter. See, if you have this honor, there's no way, there's no way, in, in or out, try your best. You will enter Conga. 
in trying to make up, in trying, not even rebellion, he was trying to make up. <laughs> but see, somebody here, hmm? scammer, stamped by heaven. The way he got the promise, stamped by heaven, by scam. Did he pay for it later? But you can see that there was a trait in him. One man saved a man. Ah, when, when, when scammer meets scammer with Passam, he bow. Laban showed him. So God in his, because God is also, God is sitting on the throne. Even though he has a plan and he chose one, he's also a just God. Because you don't, God does not need your help to do his plan. If Esau did not do what he did, God would have found a way to do it. He did not need you to be a scammer. But God said this, oh no, we will be working with him. But you can see, seven years he slaved for a man. And they, dis- they did him, gave him first wife. He said, we do another seven. <laughs> they gave him wife. He did. But if you see honor, this man worked with honor. He saved his master. He multiplied his property. He said, this man, at the end, he had a testimony. He said, I have never stolen one thing from you. I married your daughters, but I'm not rich. You are a wealthy man. Others, normally, your son, they work for you. you I go there, Buga, I know get. But even at that, I have done all I can do. That's a man of honor. It shows. Praise the Lord. Woo! Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Second case study. Jehovah. Reuben. Reuben and Joseph. Should I go or let me just jump? Reuben and Joseph. Let me just quickly browse through. Reuben. God said of Reuben. <laughs> now, when it was time to share Israel and give inheritance. Reuben, who was the first child? God said of Reuben, you are the excellency of my strength. But because you defiled a sacred thing, which now led, is in the scripture, it's not as if he said, because you slept with your father's wife. No. He said, you defiled a secret thing and slept with your father's concubine. You defiled your father's bed. So, it was not the act. It was where the act came from. It was likely esteeming spiritual things. Dishonor was in his life. Honor is a spiritual value system. It determines the value we place on things. Meanwhile, Joseph said, when he was faced with Potiphar, he said, this man has given me everything, but I will not do this against him. You are the only thing he withheld from me. That is honor. I will not do this against my God. What did I say? Honor starts. Woo! There are some of us, small blessings. Small blessing, you will not come to church again. Small money. Ah, please. I can't sweep today. I can't sweep the church. If you see me outside, my celebrity mood, my dear, my dear, you will understand. But in the presence of God, in church, I drop, (laughs) I am nobody. Do you understand what I'm saying? But you have to have that attitude towards God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, Joseph had risen to the place where he had brought his family, brought them in. And to paraphrase, in fact, Joseph had become the prime minister. He had everything at his disposal. And then he heard his father is about to die. It did not matter his status. It did not matter that he had fed his father for seven years. It did not matter that he was the one who gave them food. (laughs) It did not matter that he saved his father's life. He, He knew his father had something. Some of you, you know the undoing of this generation over knowledge. You know, you know past your mother, yes. You know past your father, yes. So that's why you think when they are talking, you can talk back. If a man as Joseph at his status ran with Manasseh and Ephraim, we must go and see father because there is something he has to drop. They didn't call for him, but there was something waiting for him. Reuben, the excellency of my strength. But well, I've already said, as the scripture says, it's not the battle is not to the strong. He says you will miss it. So usually, when he was already dividing the tribes, Jacob became Israel. So his children, their names became the tribes of Israel. So if you notice, there is no Rubenite. There are Ephraimites, 
and uh, uh, Ephraim and Man- Manasites. Why? He had told Jacob, <laughs> Joseph, <laughs> he said, who are those with you? He says, these are my children that I born here. He said, bring them. Now, he called the first and the son. Now, the first, Joseph brought him to Jacob's right and brought the second to his left. What did Jacob do? What did I say? The switch came at the cross. One child, the first child, was the nation of Israel. That's in the posterity of God. If you read the scripture, you will see that he had told him this first child, what he would be. That was the man who was now the, the that's this hand, eh? Mm? Was meant to be for the second. This was meant to be for the first, the right hand. Mm? Now, the second was here, the first was here. What Jacob did was this way. And blessed the second as the first. Joseph ran. Father, what are you doing? And switched his hand. He had forgotten that he was talking to Jacob. The one who has seen God. He forgot. And so he says, I know what I'm doing. My eyes are dim, but my spirit is seen. Bam. He did it again. So, Jesus. What Jesus, what Jacob had done was that Manasseh became a picture, like I said, the Old Testament is a picture and a shadow of who we are today. So, if you read the scripture, it says you will become multitudes of nations. He was calling you. If you read the Hebrew of that nation, it means Gentiles. So, the plan of God that he promised he gave Abraham, that he will make him a man and a great nation, and give him Gentiles and children all over the earth, was to come from Manasseh. But he was not talking about him just like that. He was talking about you and I. Gentiles from every nation will come from this one. So Manasseh, who was meant to be the second, became the first in the tribe of Israel because of the switch at the cross. So honor from Joseph who brought what gave birth to what we are enjoying today in Christ. The first one He says you blessed him and everything. But if you read the scripture, we can't go into it because they're giving me time. It shows that this is the nation of Israel himself. So God sees a plan for the geographical location called Israel. Hmm? But you see, you and I were able to come in through honor. Man fell because of dishonor. (laughs) Now, Jesus, Jesus shows us the correct picture of how to carry the culture of God. The culture of honor. The, let's read, let's read, let's read. Oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> the value system of God is not based on love. It's not based on cry. How many times you cry? And please, it's not about, I'm not attacking criers. I cry here. So, sometimes uh, me and even P.I. will be doing crying competition. But it's not based on that the value system, you don't deal with God on love or emotions. If it was love or emotions, Abraham will not carry Isaac to the mountain. It was honor. Because by the time he's saying, I love you, Lord, Abraham, carry your son to me. The blessings of God make it rich and added no sorrow. Lord, I know you love me and I love you too. It's not by that. It's by honor. Because God said it, there is no, I have no opinion. I have no what? My wife is here. There is no plan. We do not plan to go out of this country. I will read, pack your bag. Yeah. Let's make the decision. <laughs> but until God says, because when God has a stake, your opinion does not count. What? I didn't say uh, you, are, you are aligning your will to his will. You have no will. You have no opinion. Do you understand what I'm saying? There are milestone decisions in your life. You know it's only God that has the right to make this one. Not me. That is honor. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, what Jesus had done, the temptation of Jesus. I want to jump and go into Luke chapter 4 and verse 1. Luke chapter 4. Woo! Luke chapter 4, we are, we are rounding up. 
Luke chapter 4 and verse 1. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days and the devil, and by the devil. And in those days, he ate nothing. And afterward, when they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Is it a sin to eat? Please answer me. Is it a sin to eat? 40 days, 40 nights, in no drink water, Satan came and said, eat. Turn this stone to bread. Was turning this sin, people think that is the turning, because Satan said turning, is down the sin. No, it's Jesus that turned water into wine. If you look at bread and wine, which one is more sinful in standard? I'm breaking religion here. The Holy Spirit is breaking religion here. Which one is more sinful? Wine. But it's a gege bread. Because the stone can only turn to a, it cannot be sliced. But is that a sin? Was there a law against it? So the temptation was not a temptation about sin. Because if it was sin, the devil would say, go and steal bread to eat. Then there will be a law against what he did. Thou shalt not steal. But what he said was, turn water to wine. The same thing Mary said. Hey, turn, turn to bread. Same thing Mary told him. It's the same thing. But the answer to this temptation is not in the question, but in the answer. Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. What Jesus is saying is that this test was a test of his character. And what Jesus said is that I place revelation above material things. That is the answer. Honor. If you want to live a life of culture of honor, you must esteem the word of God. Can I have Doi? Doi? Please come. Where is your husband? I know you are in front camera. Please come. Woo! Oh my God. Please climb on stage. Um... Please come. Come, come, come. Oh, sorry. Wait. Come. Quick, 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 quick. Quick, come, come. Yes. Tell her to quickly run to the back and come back. Run to the back and come back. <laughs> come back. Now, tell her to run to the back and come back. Run to the back and come back. <laughs> oh yeah, come back. Sorry. Who has, who has rag? Who has a rag? Tissue paper. Thank you. Go and clean his shoes. Bam. It's okay. Clean his shoes. Do you see? She cleaned the shoes without arguing. There's a difference in honor system. The, now, the second temptation where he says, thou shalt serve the Lord your God. So Jesus is saying service because they, everything you have in life is based on two things. What is used to serve and what we serve. Everything in your life, your job, your car, your wife, your family, there are people they, they worship their boyfriend and their girlfriend. They are not married though yet. But they worship their partner. Eh? And some of you, God has blessed you with a job. You worship and serve your job. Some of you don't, can't come to work again. You can't come to church again. Because you're working. Some of you. Ah, I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping. You will not come for service. I'll watch online. It's value system. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's only two categories. What you used to serve and what you serve. You can see, she quickly served because service is heavily predicated on honor. Heavy. So Jesus is showing us the second law in the culture. You must serve with honor. You serve with honor. Do you understand what I'm saying? You, if you cannot be humble, she will not bow. But again, she was already like, oh, I'm the one with Mike. I'm the one that told her to, they told him to, no, be so. 
she was already like, uh, uh. she would have done it, but you would have had pain. You'd be like, uh, why do I have to do it? Uh, uh, I beg now, I beg. And I'm just, this is just acting, you know. In a real case scenario, she would feel bad. But it was not the same way she felt for her husband. Why? She honors this man. So service was not hard for her. Some of you, if you cannot serve, it is because you don't honor God. Please, you can go and sit down. Thank you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Woo! Jesus said, <laughs> you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Worship. Whatever, whatever commands your time, emotions, allegiance, resources, that is what you worship. Amen? Two categories. To be what you use for worship and what you worship. What you use for what? And what you worship. What you worship heavily commands your time, emotions, allegiance, resources. So go through your life. Whatever is that thing that commands your emotions, your resources, know that that's what you worship. Amen? Three, Jesus said, took him and all this shall be yours. Dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said, it has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. You know what Jesus was also telling us? <laughs> I'm here. There's no other way to go. The pinnacle. I'm at... I cannot step down, I cannot step up, but I trust the plan of God over my life. The third culture of honor is that you trust God's plan. That's all. That is it. What was God's response? Of course, Jesus went on, died on the cross, carried his fulfillment, uh, he fulfilled his destiny. <laughs> Jesus, in all his power and might, said, I cannot do anything except my father tells me. Jesus, the Bible says he was full of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is God in full. He came on the earth. The Bible says, he, could, he said, I cannot move except my father gives me instruction. No. Now, what was God's response? Philippians chapter 2, verse 4 to 11. Philippians chapter 2. Whoa, thank you, Jesus. We're almost at the end. We're at the end. We're at the end. Philippians chapter 2, verse 4 to 11. It says... Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Hmm? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, humility, taking the form of bond servant, humility, and coming in the likeness of men. That is, he made you and I. He's equal. He was equal with God and also equal with man. Because if you cut Jesus, he will bleed. But he did not consider it robbery. That's, he did not say, I am being robbed of something. Oh, Jesus, humility. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, what was God's response to honor? God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every other name. What Jesus was, was the word of God. There was no position of this highest name ever. That's, this was the first time this position was created. God looked around and said, what will I do for this man? What will I do for myself? What will I do for my son? And he said, he gave him a name that was above every name. Let me, understand, let, me let you understand. Jesus Christ did not have the weight of power in his name before. No. Jesus was the word. When God was looking at the man, what can we do? I want to make man in my own image. God in heaven, God the Father, does not talk. God does not speak. God is light. And so what light is, is an abundance of information. When you enter the presence of God, God didn't speak to you. No. You entered light, so you knew. Light is sight. You know when you enter light. You just see. If a room is dark, and you put on light. I will not. I will not stumble on this. Knowledge is as a result of light. God the Father is light. The God of all lights. So God does not talk. The word is his speech. And his word was separate from him. So when God said I will go. 
It was Jesus. And if you, if you watch the scripture, the Bible says, and the Lord said, let there be light. When you check the Hebrew word, the Lord, it is transcribed Elohim. Elohim is Jesus Christ. That means that from the beginning of time, from the beginning of the creation, it was Jesus. Jesus was the one who appeared to Abraham. Jesus was the one with Daniel. Jesus was always the one. Elohim, the Lord. But he did not have a name that was higher than every name. Until here, that was the response of God. Because God said, if you honor me, I will honor you. Therefore, God also exalted him and gave him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue. And those in heaven and on the earth. And those under the earth. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus is the Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen? Amen. So, like I said, all honor belongs to God because... The glory he gave Jesus is to. <laughs> Amen? Praise the Lord. So it takes honor to work out deals, to work out of deals and situations in your life. When you know that this person wants to be a God in your life, when this person becomes a source or wants to make themselves the source, it takes honor to work out, work out of it. No matter the amount of money at stake, it takes honor. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Adam was a man of dishonor. Look, 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 let me tell you something. No, I don't care how bad your father was. If you went, that time when we were in school, and they say, your papa, are you mad? Are you, dare you call my father into this? You know your mother has big mouth. But when the people on the street say, your mama, they talk to me, say, shut up! You will fight for her honor. You in your heart, you know, say, oh, my mama, the gist. She to talk. But there, you will say, please, don't say that about my mother. You man. Why? You love her. Oh no. That's my mother. How dare it down? They said that if you eat this fruit, you will become like God. He did not tell her, shut up. The, you, he was there when the enemy was transacting with Eve. He did not say, will you keep quiet? You want me to become like you? You are telling me to, to eat and fall. You, he gave me everything. Which one did you give me? If it's that one, I will not eat it. Thank you. It was dishonor that led to treason. It was dishonor. And so it took honor for man to fall back in line. Jesus was honorable to the end. I've told you, all the temptations were based on honor. Character. Job's test was not a test of patience. It was a test of honor. It all boiled down to one thing. Cause God and die. Never. That was what God was saying. See my man Joseph, Job. Test him. It was honor. God could count on the man who had honor. How to honor God and have the nature of honor. His word. You must place. So before we do up downside. God is the owner of honor. And so. We must place premium honor on him. And that shows in the way we place premium honor on his word. Somebody say his word. word. On service to God. And then his plan for our life. Say his plan for our life. No matter what it looks like. He has a plan for you. And you must surrender to that plan. And believe that all things work together for the good of them. them that will love the Lord. It's time for us to make quality decisions this morning. There is a strength of character that can carry the blessing. I'm also making the prayer. There is a strength of character that can carry the inheritance. I want somebody to pray this morning. Oh come on church, come on church. Ask God for the spirit of the baptism of honor. God, give me a heart of honor. Give me the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Jesus, make me humble. Jesus, make me humble. Jesus, make me humble. That I will not despise you. I will not lightly esteem spiritual things. I will not lightly esteem authority over my life. Lebra kataya bado shataya bakaya da basataya ba 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 ba.